Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. A semiconductor company with nearly 2.3 billion yuan in annual net profit, zero debt, and near full capacity utilization was forcibly taken over by the host country's government within 72 hours. 99% of its shares were placed in escrow, and the Chinese CEO was ousted from management. Dutch Prime Minister Dick Schoof, speaking on camera at the EU summit, stated, we are targeting the mismanagement of the Chinese CEO, not China. This shift in the Dutch Prime Minister's stance suggests that the Nexperia saga may soon see a reversal. However, when the European Automobile Manufacturers Association warned that inventories would only last a few weeks, when Volkswagen planned to suspend production of the Golf Antiguan, and when China imposed export controls, leading Nixperia's Dutch headquarters an empty shell. The Dutch president's statement became less palatable. This seemingly well-intentioned takeover was actually a desperate measure in response to Chinese retaliation. This company, acquired by Wingtech for billions of yuan, rescued from the brink of bankruptcy, and experiencing a 60% revenue increase and a gross profit margin rise from 20% to 40%. If such a company is considered mismanaged, then there are probably few well-managed companies in Europe. For why didn't the Netherlands choose to take over those companies? Clearly, the Dutch Prime Minister's statement is fundamentally flawed. On September 29, 2025, the U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security released a penetration rule for the entity list. This rule stipulates that any company added to the U.S. entity list will have its subsidiaries, in which it holds more than 50% of globally, subject to the same level of export controls, regardless of nationality or location. Wingtech Technology was added to the U.S. entity list in 2024. The new rule means that its subsidiary, Nexperia, will also be subject to U.S. entity list regulations. Therefore, before the new U.S. rule took effect, the Netherlands staged a power grab, aiming to seize actual control of Nexperia from Wingtech technology. Court documents show that as early as June 2025, U.S. Department of Commerce officials had already suggested to the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs that Nexperia's Chinese CEO, Zhong Xuezhing, has problems and must be replaced. This doesn't rule out the possibility that the Netherlands reached an agreement with the US, such as regaining actual control of Nexperia, thus preventing the Dutch company from being further affected by the US entity list. As for the Dutch Prime Minister's claim of mismanagement, it largely refers not to the company's operating performance, but rather to Zhong Xuezhing's overly effective service to the interests of the Chinese supply chain. From the Dutch government's perspective, a qualified Nexperia executive should strictly limit the flow of technology to China, even if it sacrifices corporate efficiency and shareholder interests. However, currently, over 40% of Nexperia's market share comes from Chinese manufacturers. Asking Nexperia to abandon its services to Chinese automakers would inevitably provoke strong opposition from its Chinese parent company. Therefore, the Netherlands witnessed this power struggle, an internal alliance between senior executives and the government, against the actual control of the Chinese company. Behind this logic lies the Netherlands' blatant double standard. Technology can flow freely in Europe and America, but it must never fall into Chinese hands. However, the other side overlooked China's countermeasures. The effectiveness of the measures. On October 4, China's Ministry of Commerce announced export controls on certain components manufactured by Nexperia in its Chinese factories. This rendered Nexperia's Dutch headquarters meaningless. While the Dutch Nexperia headquarters possessed patents and a brand, it lacked crucial packaging and sales departments, making it virtually impossible to deliver even a single chip to global customers. 
pressure from the German automotive industry quickly put pressure on the Dutch government. Dutch economy minister Vincent Kermans publicly stated that he had met with high-ranking Chinese officials to discuss how to resolve the supply disruption crisis, claiming that this matter has been elevated to the highest level of discussion. Clearly, the situation had gradually spiraled out of the economy minister's control. The Dutch prime minister's statement was intended to de-escalate the situation, but unfortunately, it failed to gain the approval of Chinese companies. On October 19, Nexperia China issued an open letter to all its Chinese employees, clearly stating, Nexperia China is an independent legal entity established under Chinese law, and our operations only comply with Chinese law and the instructions of Chinese management. This is not merely appeasement of employees, but a legally clear declaration of independence. It elevates the internal power struggle within the company to the level of corporate sovereignty based on Chinese company law, providing a solid legal foothold for subsequent countermeasures. The Dutch government seriously misjudged the power structure of the global supply chain. They believed that seizing legal documents and share certificates, these hardware would give them control of the company, ignoring the fact that China controls 70% of Nexperia's production capacity and 80% of its market share. These are the core of the company's value. The Dutch Prime Minister's well-intentioned statement is merely another replay of this cognitive dissonance in the 21st century. As for the claim that China's strength is beyond the Netherlands' reach, and that they fear China will retaliate further, China's strength is indeed beyond the Netherlands' reach. When facing China, the other side is concerned that China might retaliate further. Therefore, offering their goodwill at this time is actually an attempt to de-escalate the situation. Currently, there is no consensus within Europe on how to handle the INSA scandal, and high-ranking German officials are still calling for pressure on China. However, if the Netherlands wants to resolve this issue as soon as possible, it should make the right judgment now. Cooperation between China and Europe is very close, and they should not continue down this wrong path that violates principles. If the other side continues to believe that they are doing the right thing, it will inevitably lead to a further escalation of the situation. At that point, it won't be as simple as just restoring the Chinese company's actual control. Dutch and even European companies may have to pay the price. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.